Welcome back to another exciting, earth-shattering brush demonstration from Portland Studios. It has taken $500,000 and an act of Congress, but we are back to give you more awesome demos. Today, what we have here is a gunslinger who is a turtle. Uh, I've got several conceptual designs here. And uh, for the demonstration today, I think we're going to go with the train robber. Uh, I think there's a lot in uh, a turtle who also is a gunslinger uh, who wants to rob trains, which you have to admire. Uh, turtles aren't necessarily known for their uh, quick reflexes, their overall land speed uh, in comparison to other animals or perhaps more likely candidates for a train robber. Uh, however, this one uh, is no mediocre criminal. Um, he is uh, he's a turtle who, knowing his limitations, has still donned his bandana and his pearl-handled revolvers and is uh, he's going to rob a train. So um, what we've got here is the first stages when I work out the, uh, the values and the tones of the piece, establish the shadows, and right now, I'm using a fantastic new brush called the Lichen Brush, which I made from real lichen uh, that I grew in my home. Uh, what you see going on here is me just going to town with it. And this is what you do with these textures. You paint them like crazy, and then the secret mask technique. Um, so you may not see me... Uh, clicking on that very often, but what's happening is I've got that as my top layer, and if you alt click onto that while you have something selected, uh, you can then just delete on the fly. So it's nice with these textures, you can, you can lay a whole lot down, uh, put a lot in there, uh, really, really get some earthy textures into your computer, um, get the grain in there, uh, some of the sand into the little parts, and then you can just delete it so that it looks controlled. Um, so they're thereby using the uh, the power, the raw synthetic power of the personal computer. Uh, what we've moved on here to now is the Blender Number no. Eight brush. Uh, this is sort of a Van Gogh uh, brush. It it, uh, it had lots adds lots of little points of color uh, so that you can achieve colors like green using yellow and blue and using color mixing uh, as you can see here I'm mixing um, and uh, I know you're thinking you're thinking this guy's a crackhead he's just going to town making finger paintings trying to fool us into buying these things when it's obvious that he's a hack um, okay now that might be a fair accusation but we're, we're I'm hoping to prove by the end of this that I'm not a hack that I've spent a lot of time making these things uh, with you know growing lichen and moss and then uh, you know using them as paint tools I don't think that's a crazy idea I don't think it's nuts I think a lot of people should try it before they judge it uh, anyway we've moved on here to uh, adding some of the color, some of the tone. Uh, I'm using Multiply at the beginning with very little uh, black in the color. It's uh, all hue. And after that, we'll add a little soft light and a little overlay. I like to mix it up, use a bunch of different layers. It keeps things fresh, keeps things, keeps things moving. Uh, otherwise, you know, things get static, things get, get plastic looking, uh, and you know people start to catch on to what you're doing. And uh, and that's no fun. You want to keep people on their toes. Um, so we're moving around the image here. We're really, we're really evaluating what it would be to be a turtle that's a gunslinger. Uh, the existential implications uh, of what that would mean. Uh, now that you've gotten the general idea of how we are generally painting in to render our gunslinger turtle. I'm going to speed things up a bit here uh, to keep you from falling asleep. I realize that sometimes painting can be a lot like watching grass grow. Uh, 
Uh, so um, I'm going to speed things up here just a bit. Um, and I will work at roughly the speed of light. I have superpowers. I have superhuman capabilities of moving at speeds that defy reason and the third law of thermodynamics. I can move faster than most humans. Uh, that has allowed me to make this brush demonstration to fit into the YouTube time constraints. Uh, it may defy uh, laws of physics. It may shatter some people's brains. Uh, but it is possible. Uh, I do not promise I, or guarantee that you will also have this same ridiculous speed if you were to buy these brush sets that that Portland Studios is selling. Uh, but you will have awesome textures in your paintings, which is almost as important as being able to move very quickly. Now, some people have asked me, do I need a degree to be able to use these brushes? Do I need a formal education in being awesome to edit and to manipulate these brushes? Uh, I would say no. No, all you need is a little bit of history. Uh, I think it would be helpful to understand uh, the events from uh, the Battle of the Nile where uh, Nelson had a famous victory for the British Navy by implementing his maxim of never mind the maneuvers, always go straight at them. And by that he soundly defeated the French Navy and thereby secured that part of the Mediterranean for the British Navy and gave a crushing defeat to Napoleon Bonaparte's Egyptian plans. Now, with that, I think you can apply that and you can, with your art and with your brushes. One trick that may be helpful is when you go to pick a different size brush, for instance, when you use the blender brush, one thing that I'll do occasionally is I'll go in and, and, and instead of using the plus and minus keys to scale your brush up or down using the brush size function, you can go in and actually open up the brush creator dialog box and you can use the scattering tool uh, and if you scale the scattering tool up and down you'll notice that the brush spreads out or gets tighter based on uh, how high you have it set. This is a better way actually of sizing up your brushes. Uh, it spreads the texture out in a way that uh, keeps a visual consistency to your actual actual brush strokes in the painting itself. Uh, this is nice. I think it looks a little more interesting. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this brush demonstration uh, in the tool set from Portland Studios. This has been Justin Gerard, your host. Uh, we hope this has been helpful. Uh, I hope that your brain has been given a few extra folds um, and that it has not atrophied um, for having watched this. Uh, I would feel morally responsible uh, for anyone's brain shrinking over having watched this. Um, uh, since we set out to put folds in people's brains uh, and uh, to make synapses and nodes fire uh, in a way that hopefully is helpful towards artistic pursuits that uh, you may have. Um, so, stop by PortlandStudios.com for uh, more information. Buy everything you see. Uh, it's vitally important to furthering uh, art and society, uh, which is a good thing. And uh, we hope you'll join us next time.